Have you noticed how carefully we've been avoiding adjectives so far in order not to confuse you with their endings? Or rather, we've only used them in predicate positions where they don't have endings. As in, Das Auto ist schwarz. Die Schuhe sind rot. Well, thankfully, this is over now. And we and you will be able to flesh things out and add a bit of colour. Yes, being able to use adjectives is a bit like going from black and white to colour, really, in the way we express ourselves. Are you aware that English has no adjective endings, in the same way that the articles the and a have no endings? He drives my red car. I buy white shoes. I help my little sister. Yes, and you guessed right. German, of course, has endings for the adjectives, the same way as it has for the articles, and you already know most of them. When you actually clap and compare the rhythm of the two languages, you can hear the difference very well. I wear a white blouse. Ich trage eine weiße Bluse. So German adjectives in front of nouns always have an ending. But calm down, the whole thing is as logical as the rest of German grammar. And you won't even have to learn different endings from the ones you already know. How's that? Let's start by translating our English adjective sentences from before. Er fährt mein rotes Auto. Ich kaufe weiße Schuhe. Ich helfe meiner kleinen Schwester. It doesn't look exactly logical, does it? Well, it will. Just give me a minute to explain. We've already come across quite a few words that stand before nouns and take endings. Definite and indefinite articles. Der, die, das, ein, kein. Possessive pronouns. Mein, dein, etc. And other pronouns like dieser, viele. They're commonly called determiners. And their job description goes something like this. I'm a word that describes, belongs to, and stands in front of a noun. And with my ending, I indicate the gender, case, and number, singular or plural, of the noun. And you already know the complete set of case endings, nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive, for these words. Let me tell you now that an adjective is just another one of these words, with the same job description and the same endings as a determiner. Ich kaufe den Wein und die Schuhe. Ich kaufe keinen Wein und keine Schuhe. Ich kaufe seinen Wein und seine Schuhe. Ich kaufe guten Wein und weiße Schuhe. However, we have to add something important to this. Sometimes there's more than one word in front of the noun, forming what we call a noun group. And of course, the job we just described only really needs to be done by the first word. It makes sense. Once we have the first word ending, we have all the information about the noun we'll ever need. So what happens to the ending on the second or even third word in front of the noun, which is normally an adjective? To be in rhythmical harmony with the first word, remember the clapping, it has to get some kind of ending too. But any kind of ending will do, really, as it hasn't got a function anymore apart from maintaining the rhythm. So what we do is we simply stick an E or an EN onto it to keep the rhythm. We add an E when it follows an original, unchanged word list, der, die, das form, which is the nominative singular for all genders and the accusative singular feminine and neuter, and an EN when it stands after any changed or declined form indicating a dative, genitive, accusative masculine or any plural. Thus we get, for example, Der große Bruder hilft seiner kleinen Schwester. In the example above, der and seine give the three bits of information that you need to know about the nouns Bruder and Schwester according to their determiner job description. That is, they indicate gender, case and number. So from the word der, you learn that Bruder, being masculine, can only be nominative and singular. From seine, you learn that Schwester, as a feminine noun, must be in the dative singular. That means that the adjective that follows doesn't need to give us any more information. Its role is reduced to maintaining the rhythm. 
Grammatically speaking, der and seiner have proper or strong endings, and the following adjectives, große and kleinen, are therefore just rhythm or weak endings. In the case of große, the rhythm ending is an e because der is an original, unchanged, wordless article. In the case of kleinen, we get the default ending en, as it's a dative and thus a declined or changed form. And that's all there is to it, really. I'm sure you can figure out the next example sentences yourself. Das ist das neue Buch des netten Lehrers, nicht? Nein, dieses neue Buch gehört der sympathischen deutschen Studentin. Sie ist mit ihren deutschen Kollegen ins alte Theater gegangen. But I have to tell you two more things to cover every eventuality. Firstly, some forms of the indefinite article and the possessive pronoun that stand before the noun, like ein, kein, mein, dein, etc., in the singular of the nominative masculine and the nominative accusative neuter, don't have an ending. We could therefore call them words with a zero ending. Mein Freund braucht ein Wörterbuch. Dein Freund braucht kein Wörterbuch. Sein Freund braucht unser Wörterbuch. Ihr Freund braucht euer Wörterbuch. So obviously, ein, dein, unser, etc. are unable to do the job of giving the full information about the following noun, which could either be neuter or masculine. Thus, if we get the happy situation where we have a second word before the noun, it gets delegated to complete the information about the noun by defining it with a strong ending. Ihr englischer Freund braucht ein neues Wörterbuch. So Englischer and Neues get the same strong ending as the article der and das would, indicating nominative singular masculine for Freund and accusative singular neuter for Wörterbuch. Job done. Information given. If we, however, look at the example Meine englische Freundin hilft ihrer alten Mutter. We see that because meine and ihre manage to do the job of giving the full noun information with their endings, the following englische and alten just get what we've called the default rhythm or weak ending, e and en. Now you know why we said in the beginning Er fährt mein rotes Auto. The s ending of rot simply gives the information that das would do and mine can't do, indicating that auto is nominative, singular, neuter. And, as always, we add an e to bridge the double consonant because rots would be very hard to say. Secondly, adjectives are mostly used in combination with an article or pronoun, but in the rare case of a double adjective in position one and two, and thus with no article involved, we have what we could call the law of unison coming into play, with both adjectives wanting to sound the same to maintain a perfect rhythm. So as the only exception to the strong weak sequence, both adjectives in the sequence take on strong endings. Weicher, reifer Camembert is good mit frischem, dunklem Brot. Logically, the law of unison applies equally when we have a zero ending word in front of two adjectives. Ich habe ein schönes, gemütliches Haus. However, if two adjectives follow a determiner with a strong ending, they will of course both be weak according to the normal strong weak sequence. Das Fahrrad gehört dem netten deutschen Studenten. Did you notice something in this example? Studenten got the weak default ending en as well as it together with Nachbar, Herr, Junge and Mensch belongs to the small group of words we call N nouns. For some reason, these particular nouns are perceived as having to maintain the sentence rhythm much like an adjective with the addition of a weak EN ending to any changed or declined form. There you go, another little grammatical puzzle solved. I encourage you to go over the endings in the film dialogue to see whether it all makes sense to you now. But in case you need a refresher, Here's a summary.
and it's as easy as saying one, two, three. One, the first word in a noun group, be it article, pronoun, or adjective, does the information job and indicates case, gender, and number by defining the noun with the strong endings you're familiar with from the definite articles. If it gives all three bits of information, the subsequent words have weak endings e or en to simply maintain the rhythm. E after the original unchanged dear de dust word list forms, and en after all declined forms where the first word ending changes to indicate a plural or case. Der große Mann fährt den blauen Mercedes. Reiche Männer fahren schnelle Autos. Die schnellen Autos der reichen Männer brauchen mehr Benzin. Meine kleine Schwester schwimmt gern. Two. Where the first word in the noun group can't give the complete three-pronged information about the noun, as is the case with the zero endings of ein, kein, mein, unser, etc., the second word takes over with a strong ending to complete the information. Ein großer Mann sollte kein kleines Auto fahren. Ihr englischer Freund braucht unser deutsches Wörterbuch. 3. Adjectives describing the same noun are always treated the same, in rhythmical unison. Thus they can all have strong endings if they're in the position of having to complete the information about the noun. Ein gutes, aber teures Rezept ist frischer französischer Käse mit echtem französischem Champagner. Sie kauft mein billiges altes Auto. Or they would, of course, all have weak endings if they follow a strong ending word that has already given the complete information about the noun. Sie kauft das billige, alte Auto. It's really as simple as that. But of course, we have to put it into practice now.